Clown is in church. I brought him to church because. Where's Crazy Clown? Is he? Who is he? Where? Where is he? I mean, I don't know if he's at the overflow. Where, where is he? Where's Crazy Clown? <laughs> you found him? Chris What's his clown, name? Chris Clown. Chris Clown. Oh, sorry. I, I want to meet him. That's what I'm asking, you know. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I went for the event and I met him. Okay, Ushers, if he's in the overflow, let me get him out. Or maybe sometimes he's hiding somewhere here. Is he hiding somewhere here? Okay, maybe it's because sometimes we just come to church and hide like that. So, crazy, yeah, continue. Yes, yeah, so, I met him. We got talking and he said I should come over to his place. We got talking there and all of a sudden, this guy just started posting started i mean he said this is what he would do for tens of millions but for a reason he just kept posting me posting me i asked him why are you doing this he said he doesn't even know that it's i mean so i brought him so that i could say that himself because i specifically asked him that why are you doing this and just in two weeks two weeks who is your guy is like the biggest song in the country is right it, now is that your song yes oh you all know it So, with your guy is stopping charts in Ghana, in Gambia, every like, just everywhere. And that's not the that's not the testimony. The testimony for me is that now I have like over six international deals. Like here is my partner here. I mean, I'll give him the mic to to talk just for a bit. I mean, from I don't want to mention names, like big names. Like I'm confused. I have to start. Which one should we do? Which one should we pick? Like I was literally asking him, should we go with this? Should we go with this? You know, so I'm, 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 I'm thankful to God. Like, it could have just, it could have just been God. It could have just been God. It's Chris Clown, Chris Clown, Chris Clown. Oh, that's him. I've seen him before on social media. I, you know, I, I, I what do you call, Chris, Chris Clown. It's thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, so I was telling Pastor B how I asked you, why are you doing this? Like, why did you just start posting me? In fact, he was posting more than I was posting. You know, so I just... Um, it sort of sounded like a threat. <laughs> he said, um, he was looking at me, he said, my pastor said, who, who go help me, no go rest. Shalabaya. <laughs> I say, but I mean they help you, so I no go rest. He say, no, 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 no be. So I mean, you no go sleep. I say, what's the difference? <laughs> and to be honest, it just happened. It was a miracle. I couldn't even explain. He was like, how you they do? I say, I don't know waiting. I did do, cause I literally just sat on the chair and sang the song, and it is what it is. Let's go. So when he told me we were coming to give a testimony, I was like, yeah, 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 we'll go. And yesterday, you know, I'm on this feet farm, you know, yes. And I broke my leg and I told him, he was like, ah, so you know, go come. Now, devil, I said, no, this devil, I know go let him win. I'll be here. Wow. Wow. So congratulations. congratulations. Wow. This is, this is just a testimony of the... No, okay, yes, yes, you go ahead. Yeah, so just them um, to add to what you know both of them have said, it's literally a story from obscurity to to being everywhere, you know. And it's amazing because, like you said, this journey started in 2010, that's 13 years ago, right? Um, what is most amazing is the time that it's taken to get to 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 achieve the work of dream for the past 13 years for like, 13 and years been, yeah, it's and, been and did, it, did it tell you how this started changing from last year because he no, no i'm part of the journey so oh, i know okay <laughs> <laughs> so so you tell so, me the last year what yeah so last year was also it was it was inexplicable like this too um i believe um it was david who just decided to post from nowhere i think he called you to come and then he posted and that was it Actually, before that, we posted a video and, you know, there were a couple of guys and then it just went viral and then the video called and then posted. And then before we knew it, all these affiliates were posting and then, you know, I'm based in Abuja. 
Um, and then I went to one estate, and the guy said, ah, this viral guy. I said, how do you know him? He said, ah, this song, now we, um, um, Obio, they, 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 they sing. Ah, I'm like, okay, no problem. <laughs> oh, hold on, I want to, Spiral, how did this start last year? Yeah, so um, I met Pastor B. I was just walking outside. So I service. noticed him that 6.30 a.m., he comes here for morning prayer. So one of the days, I just really felt the Spirit of God give me a word. So I, yeah, tell me. So he said, Spyro, anytime you wake up, just see yourself in your testimony. Say what you want to see and see yourself in your testimony. So I started the journey. Anytime I wake up, I see myself performing to thousands of people. You know, in fact, I saw myself to the point of shaking whiskey, like, ah, bro, how far? You know? So I saw all those things. And before this time, it. things were difficult to. Things were even just. To... Even <laughs> <laughs> Just for you to know how tough they even to eat was difficult. Yeah, this was like the, 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 the person that would send me money. They say, oh, you don't have money to eat. He would send me money. You don't have this. But people still perceived me as a celebrity, but they didn't know what was happening. That things were just really very difficult for me. So he saw me and he said that. And then at a point, I started doubting that, how can these things be? You know, because think what I was seeing was too big. And I'm like, how can these things happen? You know, and then Pastor B was preaching again someday. And he said, you just do the thinking and dreaming. Leave the rest to God. You know, so I keyed into that. And that was when billing happened. And fast forward to now, who is your guys like doing numbers, like massive numbers? Number one what, in... 20 what? 20 global in the world. Is it 20? 20, 20, 20 most Shazam song in the world. Okay. You know, I don't know a lot of this yeah. things. So, you know, you need to. So, in Nigeria, number one, TikTok, number one, Boomplay, number one. You know, so it's just, it's just amazing. Like, uh, I mean, it's amazing. What we waited for has come, come to pass. pass. See what the Lord has done. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Th this is my prayer for you. That God will give you a testimony. All your friends will gather to celebrate. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's appreciate. We love all of you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Congratulations, Fire. Bless you. You can just please sit down with the choir so that uh, you, don't, you don't use that leg. And, uh, you know, and if you want us to pray for it, we also do that here. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Wow. I don't even know what to say again. My eyes have seen my ears my mouth will talk about goodness of God my eyes have seen my ears have heard my mouth will talk about the goodness of God praise God then uh, and um, those are the back. Do you have some of the video pictures, testimony from Wine Press? Do you have some of the videos or pictures you can show? You know, if you have, I know that it's all over Instagram and all of those things. You know, uh, you, it's just, and the reason why this is touching is that it's one thing for you to say God can do something. You know, and look at my brother now, um, Chris Clown. Did I get it? Chris Clown, yeah. You know, and he said that your pastor talk not that he knows the pastor but god just working everything out and that's what god does listen people just pray and take a step of faith god will meet you there just pray believe in your prayers believe and take a step of faith god will meet you there sometimes you say i've tried so much but so if, when people say I've tried everything, you know what I always do for them? I'll give them a sheet of paper. Write everything. Then they will not be able to write five things they've tried. I said, because he's just here that you've told yourself you've tried everything. In reality, you've not tried everything. Have you done business? I've tried all businesses. Write it here. You've not tried more than three. Praise God. 
So it, it's amazing. It's amazing just watching the testimonies of God. Thank God for what he's doing in the career. You know, when you watch the testimony, I don't know if they can get the pictures. You will see people during wine press. They came on a wheelchair. They came. How many of you saw the girl that not worked since when? 2019. She was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. The father said, she's not worked since 2019. She got up and began to work. She got up and, and this is to the glory of the Lord. And let me tell you, when God does this, he just lets you know he loves you. And God is a good and a kind God. Praise God. I mean, we can go on and on and on and share testimonies. Who also has testimonies from my press here? You, you do? Okay. There, there's one person there. Who also has, I, I just, yeah. There's, yeah. Who, who, give them the microphone. Yeah, give them the microphone. You have the microphone already, right? You have a testimony too. Yeah, come and share. If you have a testimony, just come here. Just come to my right hand side. A lady raised up their hand over there. Just come. Just come to my right hand side. Just come. Yeah, just come. But Pastor Jeremy, will you just have me, you know, arrange about two or three? Like talk to them. We don't want it to more than two or three. Yeah. Thank you. Either you have a testimony, or your friend had a testimony, you just share. Yeah, go ahead. Praise the Lord. So um, by this time last year, that was January last year, I was jobless, and um, I just took a, a step of faith, and I, I gave my I, Isaac offering of, it was so little then. Don't worry, you have to lose yeah, the so, amount, yeah. So I gave my Isaac offering, and then um, in, that was January 29th, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So on um, March, I had a job that now pays me in dollars. And... Um, this year, the Isaac offering I gave last year is um, what I gave this year is like 1,250% of what I gave last year. Wow. And then I, I told Pastor Femi George because he's also like my go to person. So it was like, go and give that testimony. I said, okay. And I just noticed that yesterday I, um, a miracle started. So the Isaac offering I gave, um, I think like four days ago, came back almost double. Wow, praise God. So, uh, God has started it and he'll perfect it. That, that, that is powerful. That is powerful. You want him to share his testimony? Yeah, please come. Just come. Just come. I, I don't mind for me not to preach in this service. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, Just so tell us your name. Just so we can know name, you. My name is Michael Collins. Okay. Um, so, I have two testimonies. So the first one was um, on the third day, wine press. Yeah. Um, I was coming to church and I shifted my uncle. I was the guy that shifted my uncle. Oh, you shifted your uncle yes. that you had the bandage. Yes. Do you have the video of the picture? You remember the guy that removed your shoes? So this was the uncle that had the band. This is it. Wow. <laughs> wow. So I, I eventually said I was going to come and testify, but you already said, okay, come out. So I came to church look at look look at him that's you look at him with the bandage on the leg and this was why he was testifying he was healed but we couldn't remove the bandage at that time and you know and look at this now so i'm good now this is good <laughs> praise god <laughs> this is good praise god praise god okay can is that the second testimony yeah testimony second testimony i've been suffering heart issues for like eight years heart issues for eight years yeah so they so, so they told me, first of all, it was asthma, then she's your, then... Um, asthma what? Then asthma. It was asthma. Yeah. Then they, they moved it to um, she's your... Um, they, she what? Seizures, right. I don't even know the name, so I didn't click it. So, <laughs> um, so um, they moved it to holding the heart, too. So I was traveling to many places. Go this, go there, go there. But of recent, there's no pain. So I'm Since good. wine press, the pain... So if I exercise, I'm not panting anymore. I'm, I'm so when you used to exercise, you you'll be panting. You will feel the pain. I'll faint. You will I'll faint. Go unconscious. Wow. So you would actually pass I'll bleed, out. Bleed, yeah. Through my nose. You will bleed through your nose. Yeah. And since last week, since I'm okay, and I've been suffering this initially. I've been hiding it from my parents because whenever they get a call that um, um Michael is in this, they're always bringing panic. So. I've been praying to God by myself and been hiding from my friends. They don't even know that I've been going through all of this, but 
I'm okay now. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. So you there are not sharing your own testimony. What are you doing on your chair? Get up and come now. Yeah. Yes. Good morning, church. Good morning. Yeah, so um, on the first day of wine prayers, I was at work preparing to go to um, wine prayers, and my heart started beating, like, really, really fast. And my driver came, and he picked me and went. On our way to church, I couldn't um, breathe again. I started crying. I called my friend, and she said I should go to the hospital. I went to the hospital, and they said that my blood pressure was really high, and... I don't know what caused it, but I went to church anyways. While I was in wine press, my breathing kept sitting out. Like, my whole life was flashing in right, right in front of me. It felt like I was going to die at any instant. So I, um, someone said I should go to the hospital. So I went to the hospital, and they wanted to admit me. I refused, and I kept coming so for wine happened? press. So what happened? On the last day of wine press, um, Pastor B was praying, and then he said that there was someone here with abnormal breathing, that God was going to like, touch you. I um, put my hand on my chest, and I was praying right there. I couldn't feel any pain, because I left the hospital straight to church on Friday, and before, um, before the service ended, I couldn't feel any pain again. I was breathing normal, and I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Pastor Jerry. This is good. You know, I didn't plan to dictate to the spiral testimony that inspired all of this. Good morning, everyone. Good, good morning, morning, Pastor B. Please tell us your name. Um, my name is Stephanie. Um, since 2020, I used to have a lot of terrible dreams, nightmares. I went to different places. When I say different places, so I came here on Wednesday. Pastor B, I don't know if you remember me. When you were coming down from the pulpit, from here, I walked up to you. And you told me that I should not worry, that I should speak to someone. And yeah. you asked me to speak to Pastor Lawrence. Yeah. Pastor Lawrence prayed with me. And the word that you sent through um, Sunday was that I should not be afraid that if the spirit of God is with me that every demon whatsoever it may be will be cast out so I held on to that one and after I prayed with Pastor Lawrence I went home and I joined the fasting I was always programming my prayers towards the 20th I always knew that, okay, if I could just make it to the 20th day, that I was going to be delivered. And you mentioned my case on Wednesday. You said that there's someone here, you're always suffering from terrible dreams, nightmares. Consecrate your dreams to God. Consecrate your mind to God. I did just that. And from Wednesday, I just had this burning sensation all over my body. And I kept telling my friends that I knew, I know that God has answered my prayer, that God has delivered me. I held on to my faith. T um, Thursday I was at Wine Press, Friday I was, I was at the very front, and on Saturday, that was the 20th day, while I was sleeping, I don't know, a spirit just led me to go back and watch the administration on Friday, so immediately I finished, I went to bed, this was around 3, while I was sleeping, I felt my head shaking seriously, and this voice just said, I can't stand behind you out, it is done. Your life will never remain the same again. Wow. This is Wine Press 2023. And when I woke up, I, I was telling my friend, I could not breathe. I was telling her. And she asked me, are you afraid? I said, no, I don't know how to feel. Worse. I've never experienced God. We have experienced God in this church. So it was so confusing to me. So we were up all morning praying, praying and thanking God. And when I came to church, yes, I have very little faith because I don't know how it's done. I kept telling God that, God, please show me a sign. Show me a sign. Let me know that it is indeed done. And Pastor B, while I was saying just that, you prayed. You said it that if you, you're a lady here, you have terrible dreams. Come outside. I'm going to pray for you. And I came outside and you prayed for me. And it is done. I've held on to that word of God. That Since it that is time, done. how has it been? I, I feel empowered. Like when I sleep, I'm no longer afraid. I used to be scared of the dark. I even used to, fat. I used to be terrified of the dark whenever it was night time. Whenever I pray and I feel anything, it's like I can resist. Yes, I pray in tongues, even asleep. Praise My God. friend is a witness. She sees. She Where's knows. your friend? She's there. What Lucy. is her name? Lucy. Lucy, come. <laughs> like, Lucy, I just, come. Like, people would not understand. They may think it's not it's just dreams. But you told me that what is spiritual husband, what is demons, what is, who are all those things where God is. If you have the spirit of God in you, you can overcome. Lucy, come. Take the microphone. Tell us your own part of this story. <laughs> 
Come on, come on stage, yes. I know you were not expecting to be called. Yeah, tell good, me. Good morning, church. Good morning, good Pastor morning. It has been a series of... Anytime she wakes up and she just stabs me, I'm sleeping. I'm like, another dream. Did you dream? She said, yes. I say, my God. You dreamt? She said, yes. Okay, what happened in the dream? She's always afraid. She's always crying. She's always, we've, in fact, we've gone to so many places. We've, we've done so many things that we're not proud of because of this issue of wow. bad dreams. Dreams Why that when she so when many she places sleeps, when there's next level. Dreams that dreams that when she sleeps, she will wake up and she will have like manifestations on the physical. It has been terrible. But you will see I the size God, of the dream yes, on your body. On her. We thank God that God brought us to um God brought us to have stars in December of last year. And our life has not remained the same ever since then. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So their prayer is connected to Isaac offering. What is it? Her prayer is connected to Isaac offering. No, just, just let us speak a testimony. That's fine. Does she, she doesn't want to say it herself. She wanted you to say it for her. Okay. Good morning, church. So um, on Tuesday, um, after NLP, um, Pastor Balaji spoke about, uh, no, I think it was on Wednesday, Pastor Balaji spoke about Isaac offering and I'm like, I'm not giving Isaac offering. I pay my tithe. I pray offering. Why am I dropping Isaac offering? So I, I was just led. To, to pay my Isaac offering. I paid on Wednesday morning. And on Thursday, I've been waiting for this contract. I'm like, God, I really want to get this job. I'm so young, but I really want to get this contract. <sighs> on Thursday, I got a six digits contract. <laughs> Times 10 of what I paid. Praise I just God. want to return all glory and honor to God. Because sometimes I just feel, Becca, you are so young. How are you going to do this? How are you going to execute this? But when I got that, I'm like, no. God is Praise good and God. kind to me. Let me say something about giving. Let me say something quickly. Because I want to correct something. There's no money you can use to buy a miracle. Yes, sir. Neither is our God a money doubler. Uh-huh. So, because I don't want to have the wrong impression that, hmm, this church, once it just give, it's just come back. <laughs> don't enter one chance. So. Mm-hmm. And if you know pastors that do that, scam. When God inspires you to give, you're not buying a miracle. What God responds to is your faith and obedience. Is what? Your faith and obedience. And you do not need to give to get a miracle. Remember that. God is good and kind. You do not need to give. So, I need to give. Mm-mm. But sometimes, God wants to check if that your faith is in me. Maybe you need one million. Give me 10,000. And believe me, I can send the rest. And what is God looking for? That faith and obedience. Praise God. I really stand against the financial abuse in a lot of churches where they will say, if you give you, give you an offering to get money next year, buy your... Mm-mm-mm-mm. My own God does not take money to do things. This, if God needs money, everything is easy. Praise God. But what God is looking for is what? Your faith and obedience. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, my I have two testimonies, but just, I'll just one summarize. minute. Uh-huh. Okay, the first was concerned. I lost my brother in November, so I've been doubting. You remember, the you love have one God. minute. Uh-huh. Okay, I've been doubting the love of God, and I actually see people fall under the Holy Spirit, but I never felt that kind of thing could happen to me. Yes, I was a Christian, but I never felt that that was for me. Yeah, it's so there. during wine press. <laughs> During wine press, I got back from work. My friends were like, okay, let's go to church. We went, and then pastor was, I think he was not even praying at that point. He was just preaching, and I had this burden in my heart. I just opened my hands, and the next thing, I fell on the floor and started groaning. I injured myself on my arms. I didn't even feel it at that point. People, like, God is real. That's the first one. Then the second one, concerning wine, um, concerning the Isaac offering, I had just paid my rent. I didn't want to take the card to even pledge anything. And my friend was like, Debbie, take the card now. I took it, wrote the amount. I was like, whenever I have the money, just send me the account number. I'll forward it. This week came. I, my office called me. Okay, I, I had the money along the line, paid it. My office called me and said, send your NYC um, um, certificate because I passed out on Thursday and want to upgrade your salary and put you as full-time staff. So God is awesome, and I'm grateful for his love. Praise God. Please give it to him. Wow. Praise the Lord. Yeah. 
I don't even know what to say. Do you have the pictures? Do you have the pictures of some of the miracles at the back? Wow. Yeah. Of the miracles, not ministrations, of the miracles. Yeah. Yeah. Of the miracles. That was a girl that couldn't walk since 2019. That's a brother. That's a... Bro- that's a uh, is it the dad or the bro- dad's brother? That's, that's the dad's brother. Remember this man, he couldn't work also. Yeah, look at him, look, look at his walker. Look at the walker behind him. That's the walker when he began to walk. When he began to walk. You know, and of course we saw him just now. You know. Just a lot of miracles. Just a lot of miracles. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Yeah. When you see miracles, two things should happen to you. Remember God is good and kind. Just remember that God loves me. And every testimony shows the possibility for somebody else. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach for five minutes and we're going to close. Yeah, because I just feel as if you should not come to a church and hear testimony, testimony. It's great because sometimes the testimonies connect with you more than the teaching itself. You know, but our church is a Bible-based church. So it's not a church you hear testimonies every Sunday. But because of the, we just had an event, you know, that's, you know, that's it. Will you please turn your Bible to Isaiah? Chapter 40, verse 27. And I want to really advise that you all go back home and watch the first and second service. They have the full messages. You know, Isaiah to the 40 verse 27. Maybe we should read this from the message translation. I think it will bless you a lot more. Isaiah to the 40 verse 27. And, and, and the reason I want to say this, what I'm teaching about today, what I talked about in your services was how to have a rich prayer time and a rich Bible study time. You know, when I got born again, when I got born again, one of the things they used to say when I got born again was this. I got born again under the student union. A scripture union. Scripture union. So when those days when they greet you, they say, hey, how are you, my brother? And the, the next question, have you had what? It was a big, in the 80s and 90s, it was a big conversation. Have you had your quiet time? Because everybody was expected to pray and read the Bible. In fact, I remember 1991, I remember my friend gave me this book and told me, when you have your quiet time, this is how to write. And that was when I learned how to journal my quiet time, 1991. But sometimes, you know, as things grow, we, we become so civilized, so contemporary, that we forget the fundamentals. So, what was so powerful in terms of prayer, in terms of quiet time, has come to a place where people don't even pray. There are Christians that go one week and don't remember to pray. And the Christians that when they pray, they don't pray out of a relationship with God. They pray out of obligation. Listen to me. If you do not pray, you should miss God, not feel guilty. I wanted to sing. I wanted to sing. You, the, see, do you have a wife or a girlfriend that you don't talk to? You don't feel guilty. I've not spoken to her. You actually miss the person. God is in relationship with you. If you do not talk to him, but most people feel guilty because it's a sense of obligation. They do not miss him. You're like, ah, something is wrong. I've not spoken to dear Jesus today. And people have reduced prayer to give me, forgive me. Prayer is more than give. And that's why, listen to me. As people become successful, guess what dies first? Their prayer life. Because they've been taught that prayer is for two things. Forgive me or give me something. Prayer is more than that. Prayer is communication and fellowship with Jehovah. And that's what I want to, that's what I wanted to come to. Someone says, what do you say for prayer for one hour? I ask, what do you tell your wife for one hour? I said, you can just flow. The same thing when you're praying, when you're with God. You know, someone says, what's your prayer point? Listen to me. When you want to talk to your partner, do you have points? You just open your mouth. Hey, how are you? And you say, my day was okay. So what happened today? What did your boss say? That's how our prayer is. We just start to say, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Then a the song just comes. You are God from beginning to the end. You know, and I, we sing that song. Then another thing comes to you. And it's just flowing. When Christians are giving thanks, eh? Christians are very st- strategic. They feel as if God does not understand them. They will start, they know, they, they, they don't want to praise God though. But they feel as if, if I just go and ask him direct, 
for the fund for my business. That would be rude. So they will not say, you are God from beginning to the end. So, and God is watching them as if God does not know you. Stop pretending. Just be honest. God, I don't have time for praise and worship today. <laughs> Please, God, but I need big help. I need big help right now. Because, listen, God knows you. Be honest with him. The one of the biggest problems with the church is hypocrisy. And that's something we have to face. Prayer is a really... So even tell God, Lord, I don't feel like praying. I need your help. Holy Spirit, help me to feel like praying today. It's that vulnerability you have with God. So I was saying this. So when it comes to Bible study and prayer, so the, there are people that don't do it. Then there are people that do it out of obligation. And I say, what makes prayer rich? What makes Bible study rich is a mindset. There's a mindset you enter prayer with. There's a mindset you enter Bible study with. And what's the mindset? The mindset of waiting upon the Lord. It's a game changer. It's a game changer. The mindset of waiting upon the Lord. And when I say wait upon the Lord, someone says fasting. You say, you can wait on the Lord and not fast. But when you're fasting, you should be waiting upon the Lord. What does wait upon the Lord means? Two examples that will help you. It's like a hunter. Do you know how hunters stay in the bush? They will stay in the bush with their gun like this. They will just stay somewhere. And they're waiting for an animal to pass by. What does waiting upon the Lord means? I'm waiting on God in prayer. Waiting to sense when God will move so that I can hold on to it. That's what waiting upon the Lord. I'm searching the scriptures. Hoping that as I search the scripture, there will be a movement of the spirit I can latch on to. That's what waiting on the Lord is. What, that's the first example of a hunter. So, when I'm waiting upon the Lord, I'm not just sitting down there. No, no, no. It's an active thing. I'm, I'm, I'm pressing in because I'm looking for a God moment. What is waiting upon the Lord? Positioning yourself for a God encounter. That's waiting upon the Lord. The same way a hunter is positioned to look for when he will cut the prey. I'm positioning myself for a God encounter. What does waiting upon the Lord mean? I'm, I don't know how many of you have gone to five-star restaurants before. But when you go to a five-star restaurant, a five-star restaurant, mostly you don't sit yourself. When you enter, they will say that, wait for your what? Your waiter. What does the waiter do? He waits. When you get a very good waiter, even after they give you your food, the waiter does not stand beside you. He, he will stand away from you. But all of his attention will be directed towards you. So much so that you're eating with your wife. You look back and say, mm, maybe you wanted sauce. You look, 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 look. Before you even ask, waiter says, excuse me, sir. Are you looking for something? How does the waiter know that? Because the waiter was waiting upon you. So, when the Bible says we're waiting upon the Lord, I'm staying to hear the signals of heaven. I'm waiting to hear signals. So, you know, the waiter doesn't need to say, excuse me, waiter. No, sir. A good waiter he just sees you moving. So, I'm positioning myself and saying, what is God saying about my business? What is God saying about marriage? What is God saying about this? What is God saying about that? That's what it means to wait upon the Lord. This should be our attitude when we pray. When we're going to the place of prayer, we're not just talking too much. We're waiting upon the Lord and seeing what he will say. In Bible study, we're waiting upon the Lord and seeing what he will say. But most people turn prayer to a religious thing. Father, Amen. But no, sir. You need to learn to wait upon the Lord. Why should you wait upon the Lord? Waiting upon the Lord brings renewal to you. Refreshing. This world is depleting. Emotionally exhausting. Do you go on social media and you feel exhausted? How do you renew yourself? By waiting upon the Lord. Do you have things that take your worry? How do you renew yourself? By waiting upon the Lord. Have you considered a letter that cancelled their contract? Some of you have grandchildren here. Are you concerned about your grandchildren? How do you stay stable? By waiting upon the Lord. February 14 is coming. Ah, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Some people are upset crying. And they don't understand. That they that wait upon the Lord. 
Because I understand the feeling when you're alone and all your friends have this gift and they feel as if I'm not a good person. But the thing is that instead of feeling that way, there's a place you can wait that can change the whole story. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So what does waiting upon the Lord do for us? Waiting upon the Lord brings renewal. It brings renewal. You are renewed because you you know, let me tell you something. You know, last week we just had this wine press and bam, no cash. Bam, few Q. Then you become negative. Then I, you know, I told myself, Nigeria does not work against me. Nigeria works for me. Nigeria will not frustrate me. No, 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 no. The power to frustrate me in Nigeria has been taken. I'm a blessed child of God. Nigeria does not work against me. Nigeria works for me. And when I go through all the navigate the sh- cash shortage and I navigate this and I navigate that, you know, I, I don't know if you realize this. You know, I never spoke about this, but I can show you the pictures. I hope you know we finished wine press on, on, on Friday. We we're meant to come to here on Sunday. And between Saturday, we had an accident in this church. What had happened was that because of the massive amount of people, we had 20, 25,000 people every wine press night. There was no way this place would contain us. So we did, we put an overflow tent in the car park that would take an extra few thousands more, even bigger than this place. And you know what happened? There was a storm overnight. And the storm took the tent. You can show the pictures. The storm took the tent and crushed it on this tent. Then we came on Saturday morning. This tent was not available again. I could have said, God, what are you looking at? God, I just said, this is not working against me. This is working for me. The quality of questions you ask determines the quality of answers you get. Did you see it? Look at how bad it was. Look, this is where you're sitting right now. Did you see it? The fence was crashed. The ACs, look at that. This is the top of the tent. We had to bring a crane to drag it out. You know why you don't hear about it? Because I don't speak negative. I talk about what is that a testimony. So you are here because you are sitting what? In a testimony. And I, because sometimes when pastors preach, we're like, don't they have problems? Don't they know the things we're feeling? Don't they know? The thing is that we, I do, at least I feel it. But I've just trained myself. It doesn't work against me. It works for me. But someone says, how do you get it? So, when that thing will just deplete you, you've gone through, maybe you were expecting a huge gift in February 14, but your gift came earlier, February 4th, and it was a gift that, I'm sorry, we should stay apart. <laughs> maybe you were expecting some funding for your business, and someone wrote your letter and cut you off, and say, I can't do the funding again. I don't allow, those things would drain you. But what I've learned is that there's a fountain I go to, where I can be renewed, where I can be refreshed. There's a fountain I go to. The question is, do you go to that fountain or you practice religious prayers? What true prayer means is that when I go to the fountain, I come out, my goodness, give me that water. Give me that water now. Give me that water now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I go to the fountain, this is what happens to me. When I go to the fountain and I'm exhausted, I'm dried, this is what happens to me. I come out wet. Yeah, that's how it is. When I go to the fountain, I come out I come out wet. I'm like, oh, I'm so dry. Well, I need to come out wet. Yeah. Some of you are dry because of what is happening in your business. Your emotions are negative. Some of you are dry because of what's happening in your marriage. Some of you are dry. When, when Sparrow was sharing his testimony, you know, let me hold on to this. When Sparrow was sharing his testimony, you couldn't really relate because you're like, it happened for me. What about me? This has been a tough year already. But the thing is this. When I'm dry, take me to the rock that is higher than I. That is the power of what? Of waiting upon the Lord. Because in the place of waiting upon the Lord, I can be refreshed. Despite the fact that I'm depleted, I know that I can be refreshed. You know why you feel depressed? It's not because of the challenges you have. It's that there's no way you are refreshed, repl- replenished. There's no way what you are refreshed. The challenges will always come. But is there a place where you are what? Refreshed. Is there a place where you are refreshed? Glory to God. I say hallelujah. 
I say hallelujah. Oh, there's a place. Thank you. There's a place where I'm refreshed. That's what it means to wait upon the Lord. So when you think of Bible study and prayer, I'm not asking you for this religious thing you do every day. I'm saying that there's pressure on you as a man to pay school fees. There's pressure to raise, to make money for the business. There's pressure on you as a woman to support your husband. There's pressure on you to handle all the emotional things going on at work and even at home. And you're wondering, can I do this? And I'm saying that there's a place where you can be refreshed. Your refreshing comes by actively forming the habit of daily time in prayer and daily time in Bible study. So when I go to the word of God, I'm looking for refreshing. When I pray in the morning, I'm looking for refreshing. Maybe the problem, you think that the problem is, is, is the things you're going through. The problem is that you have not been refreshed. You are dried and you are drained. You are like a phone running on an empty battery and yet you want to use the camera. You're like what? A phone running on empty battery. But yes, you want to use the camera. And every time you turn it on, turn, 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 power will shut down because it's time to recharge. Some of you, your emotions are out. It's time to recharge. Some of you are so bitter. It's time to recharge. And God is reaching out to you today. Glory to God. So why wait upon the Lord? We wait upon the Lord through prayers, through fasting. True, we wait upon the Lord through Bible study. But when we, when we do this thing, there's an, active, there's an active pursuit of God. Look at the scripture. Someone says, you know, I'm so depressed. Depression and worry are indicators you have not waited upon the Lord in a long time. Depression, worry, and fear are indicators that what waited upon the Lord for a long time. Let me close with the scripture. It says, why will you ever complain, O Jacob? Or whine, saying, Israel, saying, this verse 27, God has lost track of me. I don't know who is here that feels that way. And you're like, Lord, what is going on with my approval? Lord, what is going on with my grandchildren? Lord, what is going on in the office? What is going on here? And you feel as if God has lost track of me. I don't know who is here. I'm not the sound of my voice that's going on. But this project, how did it end up with that other person? And I've been praying and fasting. I say, God has lost track of me. And you're saying that he doesn't even care what happens to me. Then the next verse says, don't you know anything? What do you need to know? Haven't you been listening? The reason why is that when you are hearing, he said, what have you been hearing? Have you not been listening? What have you listened to? That God does not come. Yeah. Ma, ma, na, ma, na, ma, na, na. Give me a high five, my brother. Huh? My God. I don't know if your God stays in the shrine. I don't know if your God goes up and down. He said, God does not come and go. In good time, my God is there. In bad time, my God is there. He's there forever. Somebody say amen. amen. When you go to the hospital and the doctor give you a terrible report, he said, remember, God does not come and go. When you have a terrible breakup, remember, God does not come and go. God does not come and go. Don't never feel that God has abandoned you. God does not come and go. You know what the last next line says? It says God lasts. That means no matter what you're going through, God will outlast everything. That's so powerful. That's so powerful. Look at the child that, that since 2019 couldn't walk, saliva palsy. God healed him. God does not come and go. You're wondering, um, this, this Valentine, will I be single against Valentine? Don't talk like that. Tell yourself, God has not come and go. Your approval is still being... Don't talk like that. God has not come and go. It's too early to be discouraged about the year. God has not come and go. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Oh, that's so weak. Somebody say hallelujah. Those at the back, I can't hear you. If you're behind the camera, say hallelujah. God does not come and go. He said, God lasts. Go ahead, go, give us more. He says, he's the creator of all that you can see or imagine. He said, just for you to know, he does not get tired out. He says, he does not pause for a moment to catch his breath. Miracle, not the tired Jesus. Oh. Why are you still thanking him for this? He's doing some more. Why are you still thinking? He says, he says, he does not, listen, your God is not, a, it's not the governor that needs to catch his breath. He says, no. 
Look at the next thing. He knows everything inside out. See what it does. This is why I said, if you're depressed and discouraged, you need to get to the waiting place. Why? He energizes those who get tired. How, how many people need new energy today? Congratulations. My father has it for you. Congratulations. He, he has it for you. For like a, he has it for you. He has it for you, Funke. He has it for you, Tommy. He has it. You know, he energizes those that stop saying that I'm tired, I'm overwhelmed. Start saying that my father energizes me. My father energizes me. You've been working on the contract, it's taking some time. Look, look at Spiro's testimony 13 years. But God energizes. He says he energizes who gets tired. He gives fresh strength to drop out. Don't be like, after this breakup, I'm done. I'm tired of everything. No, don't be tired. That's why in the fourth service, I, I hope you've seen the flag. Yeah, dealing with relational exhaustion. Relationship exhaustion and frustrations. You're too young to say you're tired of relationship. You're just 28. What have you seen? Nigeria is frustrating me. You're 22. How many conscious years have you lived in Nigeria? You're 22. Nigeria is for. I want to ask you, how many conscious years have you lived in Nigeria? See what it says. It says, He gave fresh strength to those that drop out. Next verse, please. And even when young people tire and drop out, young folks in their prime stumble and fall, it says this. Those that wait upon the Lord. My God. That's why we pray. Because it's our place of where? Renewal. It's our place of fresh. Last scripture, Lamentation chapter 3, verse 28. Oh, wow. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And let me say something as I'm, as I'm closing this. I wish I can show you more scriptures. People pray and study the Bible. But the thing is that consistency is key. Is Shego here? Can you bring the dumbbell in the, in the other room? Shego, come quickly. Oh, praise God. Let's read this as Shego is coming. Let's read this on the screen. Just hold on one second. Hold on. It says, what, everybody look up here. Look up the screen. Let's read. When life is what? What is it? See, how many of you feel as if life is heavy for you? This is God's advice to you. He says, when life is heavy and hard today, he says, go off by yourself. Enter the silence. Bow in prayer. The point is that you talk to too many people, talk to God. Ah, uh, yeah, God, yeah, God. You talk to too many people, talk to God. He said, when life is hard, marriage is hard, finance is hard, approval is hard, immigration is hard, fuel is hard, cash is hard. What did they say? It says, enter the silence. Bow in prayer. He said, don't ask questions because you start asking stupid things. And I said, Lord, why me? God said, why not you? Doesn't the problem show you have the potential to conquer it? What did he say? He said, don't ask yourself. He says, what do you do? He said, enter the place of prayer. What do you do? He said, wait for hope. He says, you will stay in the word. You will stay in prayer. Onto the picture of hope forms in your spirits. I was listening to one great pastor, and he says, People say I'm bold, but I'm not bold. Though. He said, What happened is that we want to do something that we've never done before. He said, I go to fasting and prayer. He said, Once I can see it, he said, That's it. This is what he was talking about. You wait. So instead of crying, 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 that he broke up with you, you go to pray. When you see your future marriage, yes, when you see the future contract, people wonder why are you not discouraged. You say they don't need to discourage because I've seen the end. So he told you to wait for hope to appear. The problem is that you cannot wait in prayer. You can wait on Instagram, but you cannot wait in prayer. He said, wait for hope to appear. What is it? He said, don't run from trouble. Take it full face. The worst, never the worst. This got word for someone today. The key thing I'm saying to you today is this consistency. See, I know that you wait on the Lord once in a while. Wine press is over now. 21 is over. 
Are you going to move from online church to outside church? Are you going to be consistent in prayer? So I say, oh, next time we still hold it. Will it be consistent in prayers? Consistent in Bible study? Many of you have been telling yourself, this is the time I'm going to be generous towards God. I'm going to give. I'm going to give my tithe and offering. Will it be consistent? But after three months, it all die? No. Genesis. Oh, wow. I don't want to show you a scripture. I, 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 you know, I've said the last scripture, but I just need to show you the Genesis 49 verse 4. Because you know, I'm talking about waiting upon the Lord in fasting and in prayer and Bible study. But I'm only saying that this works based on consistency. I'm good. It works based on what? Consistency. Anybody can pray once in a month. But that's not where is it? Come, sir. Come, come. Take off your jacket. I want to take take off your jacket, sir. Take off your jacket. Yeah. I know you always has problem with the arm area. And you will see it now. Yeah, pick it up. Let me get one of the our our, our drummer. Come, come, come quickly. I'm talking about come. Just move it. Just move it. Just move it. Move it quickly. Move, move it to the right. Look at this. Look at this. Come and stand here. I, I, I want to ask him a question. Watch, watch this. Do you carry weight once in a while at all? Never or once in a while? At all. Okay, which of you carry once in a while? Which of the musicians carry once in a while? At least once in a year, you will practice with somebody. Come, come, come. Yeah, come. So you've not touched weight in a year now? In one year? Okay, thank you. So do you carry once in a while? Yes. Once in a while. But why don't you have the kind of... I wanted to face this. Watch this. Why don't you have the kind of muscle, the kind of biceps he has? Look at your own. The reason why is that the reason why is that you will never get this by doing it once in a while. You will end up like this with no results. If you do prayer and Bible study once in a while, this is how you end up. No results. Flat chest. That's how you end up. If you are going to get results, uh, sir, how many times are you do you do this in a week? Um, four or five times. The question is this. Genesis chapter 49 verse 4. This is the last scripture. The problem is this. We want this. But well, we want to do it once in a while. Or next level starts tomorrow. No, no. We'll do next, when, next week. Once in a while. See what the Bible says here. Genesis chapter 49 verse 4. Read the first time. Want to go? Did you see that? It says, because you are inconsistent, you will never excel. Prayer works with consistency. Bible study works with consistency. You want a child with consistency. You want to break through with consistency. I'm tired of the generation after two weeks of doing it. After two months, they break down. It says, unstable as water, thou shall not excel. Would this be your year of being consistent? Would this be the year you say, every day I pray? Every day I read the Bible. Every Sunday I will be in church. What deep is your you say every month I'm a giving Christian? I'm fighting because the difference will be clear. This is your future. If you do it once in a while, this is how you turn up. Not you see shaking every time. But if you choose to be consistent, this is how you roll. Oh my god! Oh my god. You, you'll be like you'll be like Satan, throw it at me. You say, Satan, throw, throw, throw it at me. It doesn't affect, throw it at me. Everywhere is built up. Praise God. The key is what? Consistency. So it says, How do I become consistent? One little kid that makes you just one thing. If you can find people that can hold you accountable, you'll become consistent. And that's why in our church. The biggest thing you can do in this church is to belong to a cell or a department. People that can say, we're praying today. We're fasting tomorrow. And they can hold you. But that, you have to do for yourself. Or else, you end up like him. Come over here. Come over here. Hands down. Hands down, brother. Hands down. 
flat, nothing, nothing to hold on to. How do you want your finances to be? Like this or like this? How do you want your marriage to be? Like this or like this? How do you want your project to be? Like this? This has no form, no shape, nothing. But it takes what? Consistency. Stand up, let us pray.